Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Alex Nicol. I work in the product management team, uh, specifically a TME looking after our routing stack. So that's from a, both a data center perspective and as Ken talked to, alluded earlier on, what we're also doing outside the data center from an IP and MPLS stack as well. So what I wanted to cover here today was just kind of give you a flavor for what we are doing in the routing stack, both inside the data center and outside the data center but really focusing on how we've evolved eVPN because that's kind of a strategic uh, platform or uh, protocol for doing VPNs within the data center and outside as well. So it, as you're probably all aware, our heritage is in the data center, right? So data center where we built lease spine, uh, scaled out lease spine fabrics, built on merchant silicon. And over time, customers have started running, rolling over the top of that VXLAN for multi-tenancy. And then eVPN is a control plane what we've seen now is like there's a lot of uh, synergy with that model uh, when you start looking at next generation MPLS VPN services as well, right? So drive to use Merchant Silicon, we've kind of talked a little bit about that earlier on, where there's a real drive in terms of bandwidth and the cost of bandwidth you can achieve and the scale you can achieve in Merchant Silicon. So we're seeing more and more providers looking at Merchant Silicon type solution, right? And what they're also doing at the same time is the level of automation they want to do in terms of how they bring the services online. So that kind of falls in place with what we're doing with our operating system. But probably more importantly here is there's real drive to simplify the whole control plane. So we are seeing a greater uptake and a greater interest now of using eVPN, in this case, from, a, from an MPLS perspective, right? So for the VPN services. Now, there is other challenges outside. There isn't complete synergy here. So there it is, and we, we, we are built uh, software stacks as well for the transport level. So we're doing MPLS, we're doing SR, SRTE, RSV as well at the same time. Now, as you can see from the slide here, we can't just look at the new, we're also supporting the old as well. So as we roll out these new services, we're also looking at what traditionally is done. So from an IPVPN perspective, RSE 4364, pseudo wires and everything else, we're also looking to support them at the same time. Okay, now worth pointing out, as we talk about all these features, we're still talking about running them in the same operating system. We're still having all the benefits we talked about in terms of the cloud vision and the telemetry and everything else. So if you look at our eVPN stack, it's something we actually built from scratch from a clean slate back in 2016. And really when we, when we built that, we kind of looked at it, not purely at a data center level, we looked at the bigger picture here, looking at the capability what eVPN could offer from inside the data center. So using a VXLine control plane, but also looking at what we could do with MPLS. So as we rolled out the features, and we've got to a point now where we can almost cover any use case within the DC and almost most use cases outside the DC, we looked at very much making sure as we rolled out those features, uh, we could do it both, right? VXLAN and MPLS, so there's consistency there in terms of feature sets and everything else. So what that means is now we have a model where we can do layer two VPNs, we can do layer three VPNs, we can do multi-homing. Uh, we can do, and now we've just rolled out recently last year, eVPN, VBWS, e tree functionality as well. So the point being here is that we certainly started from a data center perspective, but we've kind of rolled that data center out from, tel from general data center and enterprise, then telco DCs. And now we're seeing it being deployed as a DCI solution and also as an MPLS PE solution as well. Now, in terms of what we've been focusing ourselves on in the last sort of 12 months is really kind of two big ticket items. And this is really driven by customer demand. First is a data center focused, which is really the idea of actually taking that uh, VPN infrastructure inside the DC, the multi-tenancy, and we're seeing more and more customers now demand to actually with the maturity to actually now run multicast services at the same time. And I'll cover a little bit more detail of what we've actually just rolled out recently. And then the other piece, which I think Ken talked a little bit about, was really we're seeing a lot more demand as well in what we term, what you could term as an integrated gateway. So how do you actually migrate from the old to new, IVVPN to a type five EVPN infrastructure? How do you also scale your data centers across sites as well? How, how, how do you also hand off to MPLS? So we're seeing more and more customers want to do that, but also want to do it in a single box. So what do I mean by eVPN multicast? And again, this is very much driven from customer demand. So this is really existing customers and new customers whereby they have deployed their data center, they've got multi-tenancy there, and they're making use of eVPN for their VPN unicast multi-tenancy services, right? So what they're then now looking at is they're actually now rolling out more, want to roll out more services from their DC. So they're looking to run video inside that data center, 
IPTV, video conferencing, we even get some customers want to do some level of data, some trading apps as well, right? So the drive here really is the ability to support high bandwidth traffic, multicast traffic within the data center, and deliver it in a model where they want it to be fairly delivered. So that means that it has to be delivered in a way where each, each receiver receives it roughly at the same time. And they want everything to be delivered similar to the way Unicast is delivered, right? So they want multi-tenancy with the multicast delivery. They want optimal for, uh, multicast routing as well. So it's not just a layer two solution they're looking at, they're also looking at a layer three solution. So they want optimal multicast routing. So again, given the fact that they're likely to be deploying an any application anywhere model, they want to get the same experience in terms of routing perspective where they get to the, with the IRB model with EVPN, they want to get the exact same experience for the multicast routing. And a lot of times with the demand is that the EVPN domain doesn't sit in isolation. So in these particular customers, they're in Thrive customers, they had a lot of external PIM domains. So there was also a demand and a requirement to actually provide connectivity to sources and receivers that sit outside the, outside the EVP domain. So, so in some way, again, a gateway functionality to merge with the existing PIM domain and the new EVPN domain. Alex, so, yes. uh, as far as I've seen, you support both symmetric as well as asymmetric IRB, Co right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, again, we took, again, if you look at our EVPN stack, we very much take an open mind. Both models are symmetric and asymmetric IRB, again, from a, Service level, VLAN based, VLAN aware. So it really puts in a nice position in terms of interrupt. Right? So we didn't take any preference. Now, there is a level of normalization that's went on. Most customers now will look at a symmetric IRB model, but we don't have a preference one or the other. So what, so what do we end up delivering, right? So the kind of taking those requirements, what we end up delivering, and a lot of this prior to this, if you look six, nine months prior, that there wasn't a solution out there. Uh, or if there was a solution out there, it was some sort of proprietary solution. So what we actually delivered and looked at where the standards were going, and we actually delivered a standard-based solution. And that was one of the kind of key demands that did come from the customer. So actually, there's a couple of new drafts, if you're aware of, actually, from an EVPN perspective. So there's the IGMP proxy draft. And what this is all about is actually introducing the capability to actually signal local IGMP awareness or local receivers and actually signal them using a new Type 6 route. Right? So it's got an SMUT or IGMP join route. The other part of this requirement was that, as you'd expect, uh, it's critical applications, so there was multi-homing involved. So we also introduced support for not just uh, AA, which we had before, but AA with multicast as well. Right? We then also adopted the, the second standard, which is the OSM standard. OSM, bit of an acronym, is Optimized Inter Subnet Multicast. So the kind of concept of OSM is really similar to what, what Symmetric IRB does. So instead of uh, hairpinning any traffic or sending duplicate copies of the multicast traffic across the network, what you're actually doing is, if any interested receiver is signaled via that type six, you simply send the copy to the remote uh, leaf that it signaled the interest, and it's up to the remote leaf to actually do the routing, right? If it has multiple receivers and multiple subnets, it does all the routing locally, right? So it becomes very optimized in terms of the following model. And then finally, is that the way the standards roll out is that the, the transport mechanism is very agnostic. It's really based on the particular use case. Uh, so you can use things like ingress replication. There's also other standards where you talk about uh, city replication. But in this enterprise model, when you're talking about high bandwidth traffic, ingress replication doesn't really cut it, right? Uh, it becomes a bottleneck in the uplink. It, it's, it's not very fair in its delivery. So what we actually delivered is a, a PIM SSN model, right? But the point being here is you run PIM in the underlay in the data center, and therefore at the source leaf, it'll do it'll VXLAN encapsulate the packet. And then when it VXLAN encapsulates the packet, it'll send it with a destination multicast address, and that destination multicast it resides in the underlay. And anybody who's any leaf that's joined the underlay then receives the traffic. Right? So the point being here is we now have IGMP awareness, we have optimized layer three routing. And we have very fair and high bandwidth delivery of multicast traffic all within that EVPN infrastructure. So you would support type six, seven, eight, all of them, of course, now. Yeah, type six, seven, uh, type six for the IGMP and seven and eight for the multi uh, for the, the, the all act of multi-homing. Yeah. So that's the sync leave and sync join. Sure, all those type uh, up to type five anyway is supported. And now yeah, exactly. We again type ones, type fours for multi-homing for unicast. Type 2s for Macs, type 3s for IMITs, type 5s for, uh, 
for uh, IP as well. Yeah. So this kind of takes us to where we, you kind of there's a lot of synergy and where we're kind of done the routing work that Ken talked about earlier on is if you look at in the data center, what we're we delivering in the data center, we're delivering uh, a single control plane, and all across that single eVPN control plane, we're doing type two, uh, type two or layer two VPNs with type two routes, layer three VPNs with type five, right? And we can do multi-homing and control plane learning. What we've done, what we can now do is take all that benefit and that single control plane. And what we've done recently is just expand it to give you now the same functionality, but with an MPLS control plane as well. Or sorry, MPLS data plane, I should say. So now we've got a full rich feature set, both at for the VX, EVP and VXLAN, but also for EVMB and MPLS. So this means now we can do ELAN, ELAN services with the type two, obviously. ELAN services with VPWS. Obviously you get all the all active multi-homing with it. You get the control plane learning with it. You know, support also E3 EVPN. And probably more in benefit here is you can do all this layer two services and with the same control plane, we can also now support layer three VPN services. So this kind of sees a lot of, we've seen more and more customers look at EVPN as a, as a simplified way of deploying both the VPN, layer two VPNs, but also the layer three VPNs as well. Anyone migrating from 2547 to EVPN? Yes, we have a few customers. I mean, it really depends, and I'll talk a little bit in a minute, but it really depends where they are. Uh, we have got some customers who are just building uh, a greenfield, so they're just, there's no migration involved. They're just going to EVPN immediately. But there's also other customers who want to migrate to EVPN, less for the layer three piece, but they want to actually simplify their, their layer two VPN, so the pseudo wires and VPLS circuits, and they want to then at the same time just do layer three, right, and just collapse. Yeah, everything. Especially for 2547 or 4364, those L3 VPN I was asking, but I got your, I got your answer. Yeah, yeah. So the point being is most customers are quite happy with IBVPN, right? It's more what pushes them to go to a type five model is more down to the layer two requirements, right? And then they naturally just migrate over as well. But the point, the big challenge there is the gateway, right? So what they, there's never a point where they can just turn everything off. So they need to have an interaction between, between the old IVPN world and the new type five EVPN world. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So the point, the kind of point here is that if we've, as, as we've grown out our routing stack, right, is we've kind of really evolved to a point where we now have a, a multiple use cases from peering, internet exchanges, provider edge, and now the gateway functionality. So what, what I mean by the gateway functionality is now the idea of for built a DC, we handed off to an external router. So the border leaf in this case would terminate all your VRFs within your DC, and you would have some sort of simple option you hand off to an existing PE device. And that would then be provide the MPLS connectivity. We're seeing more and more customers actually wanting to collapse that into a single box. Collapse it into a single box for kind of multiple reasons. One is just a pure cost perspective. They want to go from maybe instead of buying two boxes, they want to do one box and they want one box to do everything both their connectivity within the DC, but also IP VPN connectivity outside the DC. And the third, the second kind of big use case as well is what we term as an IP border leaf. And this is more about simply EVPN scaling. So this is now allowing you to do a multi-fabric EVPN type design, not across an MPLS circuit in this case, but across a pure IP circuit. Right. So what you're now doing is terminating your VXLAN and terminating your routes on the gateway and then re-advertising or re-originating in the next top. And therefore you end up with a more hierarchical EVPN uh, infrastructure allowing you to scale both layer two and layer three across multiple sites. Mm 